Hello everyone, welcome back to China Admissions YouTube channel. And for our interview today, we have Grace, a Master of Engineering Management graduate from the prestigious Tsinghua University, China. And over on our YouTube channel, Grace will sharing her amazing journey, how she got accepted into Tsinghua, and all about her experiences as an international student pursuing her master's degree. Before we jump in, Grace, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, sure. Uh, thank you, Olivia, for the introduction. My name is Grace Lin. I'm from Indonesia, and I'm very happy to be here today to be able to share. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so today I will be sharing about my master's experience at Tsinghua University. Before I begin, maybe I can tell, uh, tell you a little bit more about myself. So I have a background in chemical and biomolecular engineering, and I did my undergraduate actually in the United States. Maybe later in the interview, I can share a little bit about why I chose to pursue my master's in China instead of continuing to study in the U.S., um, but yeah, uh, right now I'm working in the chemical manufacturing industry, so very up my alley. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, what made you decide to pursue a Master of Engineering Management at Tsinghua University? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, my undergraduate background was in chemical engineering, but I decided to move to um, <clears throat> engineering management. So in Tsinghua, Engineering management actually falls under the industrial engineering department. And I thought, um, you know, maybe taking this major would be very complementary to my undergraduate uh, studies because, like, I think it's one thing to learn about, you know, like processing and chemical processing, but it's another thing to learn about the management itself. And initially, I thought I wanted to do an MBA or a master's in management, MIM. Uh, however, I decided that since, you know, in the at, at the end of the day, I think uh, business and like management is very learnable when you're working already. So I thought, okay, maybe I can uh, equip myself with some industrial engineering knowledge and that way it can help me implement the technical side of, um, you know, the company or the business into the management side. So uh, so that, 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 that there was that type of reason too. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people actually asked me why I didn't continue my graduate studies in the U.S. after uh, graduating from UPenn. And I think there are a lot of reasons for that. The first was, uh, I think I graduated in 2021 from the U.S. And that was when I think COVID was uh, still quite rampant around the world. So I wanted to be closer to home because I haven't been home in around two years at that point. And aside from that, there were also professional reasons. So I think China is at the forefront of manufacturing. And there's a lot of Chinese investments actually coming into Indonesia at the moment. And because my family business is in chemical manufacturing, and I thought, OK, if I'm going to be joining uh, the family business at the end of the day, I want to be able to build a network in Asia and I want to kind of immerse myself in the Asian market, right? So COVID and then professional reasons. I also have personal reasons for wanting to pursue my master's in China. Um, I've been studying Chinese practically my whole life, but I felt that before I went to China, before I lived in China for two years, I wasn't able to open my mouth and like talk to people in Chinese. So I wanted to hone my Mandarin speaking abilities as well. Uh, aside from that, I also really like traveling and China is as a travel destination quite accessible, uh, especially since there are high speed trains now around the country. You asked me why China, I guess that would be my reason. And if you ask me why, Tsinghua IMEM, so that's the International Masters of Engineering Management. Um, for me, I think I mentioned this earlier also, uh, engineering management is the intersection between business and engineering. And I wanted to kind of bridge that gap between the technical and management side of uh, my family's business. And I, I think that in this data-driven world, um, engineering management can help you in order to kind of integrate uh, these two disciplines, right, management and engineering. And since the program caters towards international students and classes are offered in English, um, this became an important uh, consideration for me because even though I wanted to live in China, I thought that, okay, maybe if I do my master's in Chinese, then it's going to be very difficult for me to graduate. Um, so I thought, okay, this would be the perfect option for me, which allows me to kind of explore China, but also give me the 
space for me to grow academically without having that type of language barrier uh, mm -hmm. I would have to go through if I did this program in Mandarin. Okay, and then Max, can you tell us the application process step by step and then what are the specific steps involved in applying for this program? At Qinghua. Sure. Um, I think the process is pretty straightforward. There is an IMEM website. So if you Google IMEM Qinghua, there is an information page about the uh, about the application process. And the information about the program, so the curriculum also is available online. And if I'm not mistaken, it updates every October. So it tells you like what are all of the required documents and then how to apply for a scholarship and also provides a link to the application portal at the at the bottom of the page. And then because in China, I think there's a lot of scholarship opportunities that you can actually apply for. I think for the program that I was in specifically, there are two main scholarship opportunities. So the first one is the tuition scholarship, which is granted by the university. And the second one is the Chinese government scholarship. You can indicate which one you want to apply for in the application portal when you're filling out the form for submission of your application. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there are also other types of scholarships, but since I only apply for the Chinese government scholarship, so I'm afraid I don't know a lot about the other um opportunities and that's up to the applicants to do their own research about these alternative scholarship programs and then what are the requirements and what kind of student like uh, what kind of student profile is Tsinghua looking for especially in your major I think if you're applying for an international program at Tsinghua and I'm sure other universities is also the same um, with with courses offered in English, I'm pretty sure you need to be a non-Chinese citizen. So I think that's like the first thing that they mention in the scholarship or in the application website. And for IMM specifically, I think this program is very forgiving in the sense that IE, like industrial engineering and engineering management, is very broadly applicable to a lot of different industries. So my classmates actually came from a lot of different backgrounds. So um for example, I was in chemical engineering, but I had classmates who were studying management or like electrical engineering or mechanical engineering. So I think this was a good place for us to also kind of exchange our thoughts and like talk about our different disciplines. And when we work in groups, that's kind of where all of the like different, like it becomes complementary. So what our strengths are. Okay. Uh as you remember, like, uh, are there any specific documents that we need to submit for the application? Yeah, so I mentioned earlier the academic transcript, but along with that, I think for master's programs, you need to submit a copy of your undergraduate diploma. Uh, and if you're still a current student, that means that you will have to provide a proof of like your status as a student at your current university. And then along with this, uh, you would need two recommendation letters, if I'm not mistaken from recommenders who hold the level of associate professor and above. I'm not sure what the requirements are if you are submitting a, a recommendation letter from a professional, but mm -hmm. I think in the website or you can email the admissions office to kind of uh, clarify this. And then obviously when you are applying for a program, you, you, they will ask you for a personal statement and also your resume. And because the program is offered in English, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's also an English proficiency test score that you need to submit. However, I think if you go to school in an English speaking country, so like, for example, I went to the US, then I, d I don't have to submit this English proficiency score. Yeah, but I think okay. details can be kind of clarified yeah. further if yeah. you check the website. Are there any specific eligibility criteria that we should be aware of? Like maybe working experience or minimum GPA requirement, something like that? Okay, so I think because this is a master's program that you can take right after you graduate undergrad, so there's no requirement for uh, work experience. However, I do think that the academic transcript from your undergraduate studies is something that they would be looking for. And then can you tell us about the selection process? How does it change what you choose its students? Like if I remember correctly, I think you submit the documents and there's a deadline for it. There are a couple of, I think there's like three cycles, three admission cycles. So for each admission cycle, the dates would be different. I think the first one opens in December. Yeah, so there's an initial review process where after you submit the application, they call you in for an interview. And that interview is done 
with faculty members. So like with the professors of the IMEM program. And it's not as intense as people think it is. I think as long as you're able to answer the questions and if you even if you're not able to answer the questions, you can be honest about it, right? Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty standard. Uh, and then at the end of the day, they will tell you whether you got accepted into the program or not. So there's going to be like a letter of admission uh, that they will be giving you. And if you are also applying for a scholarship, I think there is a separate document for whether you got that scholarship or not. Okay, then let's talk about the student life. What was it like being a student at Tsinghua? Ah, student life. I feel I feel like there's a lot of different aspects of student life that I can talk about. Maybe I can start with like the general academic life. But I, I do want to make a disclaimer, though, before I start. I speak from my own experiences, right? And my... Uh, my experience at Tsinghua may not be representative of other students' experiences. And I do feel that international master students have a very different type of challenge as compared to undergraduates or like local Chinese students. When they uh, apply for a master's program, they have a very different uh, eligibility criteria and also like a very different experience when we're going through the program. So for... Me, I feel I was swamped with classes in my first year. And then in the second year, I was just focused on doing research for my thesis. And I think something that really that I really appreciate about this uh, master's experience was that I really was able to like my, my professor helped me to very high like academic standards. And from there, I was able to understand what it means to go through rigorous scientific research that for me, was important because it allows me to identify what problems there were to solve and then how to solve these problems, you know? And I think that's very um, valuable for me moving forward because that's like optimization is something that I would have to be doing, right, in my future career. So uh, that in itself was great for me because it provided a learning curve that I would have never been able to overcome on my own and then I was very surprised by the library culture at Tsinghua uh, mm -hmm. I think people are maximizing the usage of the library I feel like people queue before the library opens so the library opens at eight o'clock every morning and people are queuing before eight o'clock in the morning in order to you know like find seats so I found that really funny because like I think I personally went to the library but I always went in the afternoons and like Sometimes I go there and I can't find a parking space for my bicycle. And that's just, I think for me, a testament to how hardworking these Qinghua students are. Um, yeah. So yeah, and it was it was a time. It was a time. <laughs> um, aside from that, I think apart from academic life, there's also the food scene. I think it's great. I think Qinghua boasts... 13 canteens or something and then like I tried my best to visit each one but I can't say I visited all of them because there's just so many uh and like actually yeah and like funny thing is that when I first uh was researching about the university like the canteens is actually one of the reasons why I decided to apply because I just thought it was so interesting how there were so many and like why why would you need so many but when you get there it's cr like these canteens like these student canteens are so huge they're like four floors and like every day it's jam-packed so it's like I think it was an experience like being at the top university in China being with the brightest minds and eating amongst the brightest minds in China sometimes I just feel like wow like how am I here but yeah uh, there are also a lot of coffee shops that people would usually go to for hanging out with their friends or like even to do uh, homework and work on their other assignments. And I think health is such a big aspect in Tsinghua. Uh, one of our mottos is actually Tsinghua. So that's like, uh, I think it translates to like, if you, do, if you don't do sports, you're not at Tsinghua. It's not Tsinghua. And so I appreciate the fact that sports is greatly encouraged in Tsinghua um, because for me, I feel that even though I'm not like a big sports person, but I do feel like like at Tsinghua, you have like the opportunity to like try out a lot of different sports and like they have a huge gym that just has been renovated. So I think 
like if you do like sports, Tsinghua is the place for you to be uh, because there's just so many people doing different things. Um, and then aside from that, I think I also love the performing arts. Um, and I appreciate that there is always something going on at the auditorium on campus. So I've watched, I think uh, across the year, like, uh, like over the two years, I've watched two ballets and then I've watched piano recitals. There are also plays. And then if you like to watch movies, they do like movie screening sometimes. And I think it's really great because at Tsinghua, I feel that uh, I was in a place where a lot of the students were super well-rounded and as a result I wanted to be just like that like I wanted to be as well-rounded as they were because these were like really smart people and they were also doing all of these other things so it was it was pretty great when I was when I was there that's really amazing okay yes. what was the best experience that you had as an international student at Chinghua maybe I should uh maybe I can phrase this as like the best takeaway that I've gotten from my experience at Tsinghua yeah? because uh, I, I don't I have so many good experiences at Tsinghua I can't choose just one but I do <laughs> think that being there and being in Beijing helped me gain a more holistic understanding of Chinese culture and how it influences China's economic trends um, and I feel that my position as an engineering management student allowed me to learn about, you know, like core industrial engineering concepts such as quality engineering, decision making. And then I was able to also go to factories and like companies. And I saw how these Chinese companies are able to grow so fast, so big. Uh, the knowledge that I gained from classes actually were very applicable. So I was doing an internship in Suzhou uh, after my first year. And I think my classroom experience at Tsinghua actually bolstered my uh my my knowledge so as like obviously when you go into a new role there's a lot of things that you have to learn but i feel that because i have this background um you know like coming from a chemical engineering undergraduate program and then also like studying uh engineering management i feel like that was very helpful for me in order to contextualize uh, what I was doing at my internship. So uh, another thing that I learned was, you know, like one of my, at, at, in one of my classes at Tsinghua, I learned about the importance of guanxi or like, how to say it, like networks, uh, which yeah. emphasizes the value of relationships, right? And in various aspects of our lives. And I think Tsinghua itself has played such an instrumental role in my professional and personal growth. And I feel that, um, over there, I was able to meet a lot of my very good friends and a lot of my best friends, actually, that uh, I feel I'm able to learn so much from them. And I think that's just something that I think is really nice, that uh, me as an international student, I was able to connect with other international students from all parts of the world. And now I just have friends from like everywhere. And that's yeah. that's I think that's like the most valuable thing that I gained as an international student in Tsinghua. Mm -hmm. And finally, for anyone watching who's interested in pursuing a Master of Engineering Management at Tsinghua, what tips would you give them? I think firstly, know the application timeline. So like I okay. said just now, the website updates every October. And when you're actually filling out the application form, maybe ask yourself, like, what is your goal of applying to this program? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to be in China? Because then it helps you kind of solidify your decision of like applying. And when you actually want to be somewhere, then that makes you a lot more motivated to do better in that new environment, right? So I think the first thing is to ask yourself, why do you want to do this? Um, yeah. And that maybe also set up a WeChat account because it's easier to communicate with people that way. And um, I mean, email is okay too, but I think people respond a lot faster using WeChat. Okay, Grace, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us today. Thank you. And for everyone, for everyone out there dreaming of studying at their dream university and head over to ChinaAdmissions.com for tons of helpful resources. Well, see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.